In this video, we are going to continue to talk about materials in 3ds Max using the physically based render materials and textures. We will see also the part concerning the texture. In the previous video, we focused on the basic parameters of the materials, which are the diffuse effects, the roughness, the specular or glossiness, and the refraction, so the transparency and the translucency. So all these values are just um, simple values, so they don't need texture, but we can apply textures if you want to have more realistic effects. So we can create PBR materials, physically based render materials using the Arnold standard surface material, or we can use also the, the 3D Studio physical materials. They, we saw that we are they, they work in a similar fashion. Now this is also an emissive uh, material right here inside the scene. So we also talk about how to uh, create a light using a material with the emission or emissive effect. Now you can see in this scene right here, we have a lot of noise. Now noise, it's a problem about the rendering or also due to the quality of the lining of the source of lights and also of the render settings. So we're going to talk about rendering later, but uh, you can see here that just by handing a single light, you can see that where the light is, I don't have the noise. So we're going to address the noise issue later. Don't worry. Now we're going to talk about materials first, and we're going to finish the part concerning the materials first. So we're going to proceed here with the textures. Now we can see that we can look for materials, PBR materials on the web. We will find a lot of uh, examples, we'll find a lot of packages also that we can use and we're gonna see how we can create our own customized materials using textures and assembly the texture together into the channels. Now when I look for a texture I look for the precise term so if I'm looking for a wooden floor parquet I will type the name of what I'm looking for and you need to avoid anything that it's in perspective or that is not completely flat. Avoid everything that it's, um, it, it contains parts that are too bright or parts that are too dark. A good texture will be something really flat in terms of lining. So this may seem like a good texture, but probably it's not. Probably when you're gonna repeat this over and over, it's gonna show some seams. And also this one here, you can see that it has a part that is too dark and a part that is too bright. So that is gonna be repeated many, many times. All the times that will repeat the taxa. This one looks fine. This is, you can see, more flat. It doesn't have like particular details that are, uh, you know, uh, more evident than others. So a term that you can use, it's also seamless, which means without seams. Now you need to think about the texture as a tile that is going to be repeated over and over. And so with a, just a small tile, you can cover large areas. But by repeating the texture, you, you need to make sure that doesn't have seams, unless you want to do an actual tile. So if you want to create tiles, well, don't... Don't, we don't care about the seams because tiles, they do actually have separation, one tile for the other. But for every, everything else, you need the seamless. Unless you want to create something that is going to be placed just once, like a painting. You can see here in your raw pixel, you, you can find a lot of public domain pictures, images, and uh, paintings and graphic design. So yeah, in that case, you probably want to place that once. So if you need to create a picture frame, a painting, or say a TV screen, you can just apply it once. Also, we did that with the, with the projector using the light to create a projector. Well, in that case, you probably want to use one uh, placement for an image. So you, we can distinguish two types of taxes. One that can be repeated infinitely and other that can be placed just once. So in this case, when we talk about the standard texture, usually we refer to these images that can be repeated like a tile. And so we find the term tiling, which means 
the texture can be repeated. It's going to be repeated many, many times. So you need to make sure that that repetition is not visible. It's less visible as possible. You need to make sure that there are no uh, particular details that are going to be too um, too evident. So like a logo or uh, you know everything, a graphic that is going to be applied on that. Now you also need to think about the size. 2048 is considered a high quality texture, but if you need to do something really small, if your object is pretty small, you probably don't need that size. So sometimes you can also increase this. You, you can arrive to 4K, 8K textures if you have, for example, just one placement of the texture. But usually when you repeat the texture, that's the advantage that you can use smaller size like 1K or 512 times 512. Now, usually the textures are square, so they are not uh, they don't have a particular shape they are just square so you can look for square texture that are with the resolution of a multiple of two now to be more specific you can also search for those channels we talked about in the previous video so for example you can search for a roughness texture so a metal could can have a roughness texture and um wood can have uh, its own roughness texture. A glass also can have a, a roughness texture. So the roughness texture is the texture that is going to tell the material where it's going to be more glossy or less glossy. And we already talked about the fact that glossiness is basically the opposite of roughness. So everything is about black and white pixels. The white represents 100% of the effect, the black represents zero effect so if you talk about specular white is going to be really glossy black is not going to be glossy when you talk about roughness it's just the opposite so you can see that around you will find packages with the diffuse texture the reflection which is glossy dense and also sometimes you're going to find roughness so whether you find glossiness or roughness you can change then the parameters in the material now also another important one is bump or also sometimes you can find the normal. Now bump and normal maps are used to create details on a, a material to create 3D superficial effects which are fake. So you're gonna have a lot of details but not increasing the number of polygons in your scene. So this is kind of a fake effect to keep the, the size of the scene low but having a lot of details. Normal, it's more Polish, so you can distinguish because they are like purple looking and bump is going to be again black and white white meaning the most extruded part black meaning the less extruded part so everything again it's based on black and white or also shades shades of gray which is going to be like uh, middle values mid values so by looking also for metalness we can find again a texture that is going to guide the, the metalness effect. So for example, on one object, not every part of the object could be a metal, just perhaps some screws or some um, metal plates. So always try to find the, the complete package of textures. Like in this case, you can see here we have height, which is like a bump. We have ambient occlusion, we have diffuse and so on. Now to start to bring in some materials, I'm gonna use this architectural scene that we created earlier using the different um, objects, parametric objects that we find in uh, 3ds Max, but I just get rid of some of the extra stuff. And just to show you how quickly it is to create like a painting or just to place a, a single texture on an object, just to select the texture from the folder, click and drag and apply it directly on the surface and that's it that's your texture right there but this is simpler when you need to place a texture just once you don't have to repeat it you don't